Hello my Tubies, it's me, Sheila True Love, and today's topic is, let me see, I had it written down here, staying with a narcissist can be fatal. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking at this uh, show called Fatal Attraction, and <clears throat> I want you to see how things can end up and how things can turn out when you are with the wrong person. Anyway, here we go old friend and colleague of his, they reconnected and had this explosive love affair. But on May 29th, Roderick is inexplicably gunned down in a hail of bullets. When police uh, get on the scene, of course, neighbors are on Oops, edge. Sorry. They'd heard the gunshots and then there's a deceased man outside his apartment. And so there was a lot of kind of unknowns about what happened and if the shooter was still around. Roderick Smith suffered two gunshot wounds, one to the abdomen, that came out through his arm, actually broke his arm, and then went to the face, and that bullet was lodged inside his brain. On the floor near Roderick's body, investigators find two shell casings and a kitchen knife. It looked as though the altercation had taken place there at the front door, and initially it was hard to tell whether the killer was welding both the gun and the knife, or what. Stepping into Roderick's apartment, investigators quickly determined the source of the knife and who was likely wielding it. Here's where the knife came from. There was a drawer that was open, so you could tell the victim quickly ran to the kitchen and grabbed a knife. That knife was found a few feet away from the victim's body. That gave the indication that there was some struggle and that at some point either the knife was knocked out of his hand or he could have dropped the knife when that gunshot wound went through his arm. But what had sparked this attack, and who was the aggressor? Clues found at the scene give investigators one idea. They were both still out. There were just pieces of wood that were laying inside the apartment, and the lock was still engaged, so it appeared as though it had been kicked open. When you're looking at the door getting kicked in, you're saying, okay, well, maybe it's a burglary. He could have been robbed or murdered that way because of the area that he lived. It was, it was pretty fast over there. It's kind of a bad area. But as investigators continue searching Roderick's apartment, they discover there's a catch in their robbery theory. There's nothing missing. The apartment was fairly clean, undisturbed. Police were able to dismiss um, the motive of robbery. There was nothing taken from the apartment. No sooner have investigators shelved the notion of armed robbery than a discovery in Roderick's bedroom ushers in another possible motive. Hey, detectives, found something back here. You should take a look. The officers lifted his mattress and found drug paraphernalia and drugs inside the apartment. When you go to the scene, yeah, you find drug paraphernalia, yeah, you find drugs, you think? Yeah, what they see is a crack pipe. They have it in a baggie. A crack pipe with some crack up in it. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to, this it's more and more interesting. Okay, we got drug that gone bad. Once police found uh, drugs in Roderick's apartment, then, of course, um, the case took on kind of a different aspect, too, because they didn't know how the drugs were involved. Police want to talk to family and close friends. <clears throat> Once Roderick's family gets word of his death, they rush to the scene. Do you know if Roderick was involved with any drugs? I mean, there was in his past, he had a problem with that before, but man, he's been clean for a while. Well, we found some paraphernalia in the apartment. And we believe that may be the cause. For Roderick's loved ones, the revelation that he had seemingly backslid into the world of hard drugs hits them like a punch to the gut. It was hard to comprehend that. Um, I was speechless. I was numb. He was on the road to doing better. I mean, he, to my knowledge, didn't have any struggles any longer. But you know, as we all found out, that wasn't the case. He still had a few weaknesses. While friends and family are unable to shed any light on Roderick's recent drug use, they do clue police in to Roderick's burgeoning romance with Kimberly McRae. Kim's name came up there with Roderick's son as someone that had been coming over and talking to his dad. How long was your dad involved with Kim? A couple of months, I think. She may or may not have been the last person that I've seen over at Roderick's house. Um, so because of that, she's a person of interest. We want to talk to her and see what she knows. So police were aware that there was a female who possibly stayed at the home, uh, and they were looking for her. 
As the true nature of Kim and Robert's relationship comes into focus, detectives begin to wonder if Kim might have contributed to Robert's drug relapse and perhaps even his death. I didn't see a whole lot of people come over there to party. So I can smell it all through the hallway, you know, so they were doing drugs over there. They had a common interest and that was using crack cocaine. You notice what their common interest is? Using crack cocaine. And I see this a lot. And I am not a racist. Jehovah God and Jesus Christ know that I'm not. I don't have no problem when I see ebony or black women. If you want to call it black women. I like to use ebony uh, with a Caucasian man. Or when I see an ebony woman with a Chinese or Indian or it's Puerto Rican or what have you. I'm not a racist. In fact, interracial dating is a beautiful thing. Do I have a problem when I see black men with uh, Caucasian women? Or other, uh, yeah, I do. Because the reason you see ebony women with other races of men is because ebony women outnumber. We outnumber black men tremendously. So if you see <clears throat> or if you're a woman who want a family or you want a partner in life, then we have no choice but to step outside of our race. So I'm not a racist. I have no problem with people interracially dating. But when it comes to these black men, what is your excuse? You sit here and they say they want to be treated like a king. Show me anywhere in history where a king would turn his back on his own creation. You know, black men created black women. We damn sure not the we don't come from no, 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 no Caucasian, Spanish, or Indian, or Chinese sperm. We come from the sperm of a black man. You created us. What king do you know that would turn against his own nation? What king do you know that when he sees his woman is being attacked, he's not going to step up and side with his, his creation? He's going to side with his woman. But that's not what you see these black men do today. They'll sit up here and see the media, marketing, advertisement, um, um, magazines. They're all trying to make ebony women feel like we're not beautiful. We're not good enough. We don't have anything to offer. Are you crazy? And instead of black men stepping up and saying, hell no. The same way white men have stepped up to make their race of women be the what what is that the uh, the ideal of beauty the standard of beauty why is it that white men could step up for their women but you see black men they'll sit up here and get on the bandwagon to tear down their own race of women <clears throat> why don't you step up glorify uplift build up your own race of women instead of getting on the same bandwagon to tear her down what kind of king is that? That's not a king, sweetheart. That's a jester. J-E-S-T-E-R. Look it up. What is a jester? A jester is a professional fool, a professional clown. And that's what these sellout men are. You know, it's disrespectful for you, for me to see a black man with a Caucasian woman. That's disrespectful. Yeah, it is. Because you have your own race of women that you need to be building up. And am I a racist? I already explained that to you. No, I'm not. Because seeing couples or interracial couples, when it's based on love, when it's based on love, it's a beautiful thing. You know it and I know it because that means that the world is getting along. But when you see that you have your own people who need some help, you need to side with your own. Make sure that they're well first. Take care of your own. Build, you know, no. Before I step off to help you, I got to take care of mine first. That's the same as me having children of my own, but I don't take care of my children. I'll go and take care of somebody else's now, but I don't take care of my own. That's ridiculous. And that's what you see these black men doing. And watch how you watch this show further. Two black men are going to end up all effed up. She's going to come out smelling like a rose. Watch how this is set up. This is called strategy. This, and I'm looking, I'm studying all of this. One black man gets life in prison. The other black man is shot down dead. Watch this. Our 
hours after the shooting death of 48-year-old Roderick Smith, authorities in Dallas, Texas are working tirelessly to try to identify his killer. But other than a couple of shell casings, concrete evidence is hard to come by. We had no DNA. We didn't have any fingerprints from any potential suspects. We just had the two shell casings. And everything that was lifted as far as fingerprints came back to Roderick. The only lead detectives had at this point was a discovery of the drugs inside Roderick's bed. According to neighbors, Roderick's girlfriend, Kimberly McCray, normally spent the night at Roderick's place. But when police arrived at the apartment shortly after the shooting, Kimberly wasn't there. Yeah, his girlfriend drove a white car, but it wasn't here last night. Are you sure? Positive. It was suspicious at first because Kimberly tended to spend the night at Roderick's apartment every night. But that night, she hadn't spent the night. Detectives also discover that in addition to their intense physical bond, they share a history of drug abuse, specifically crack cocaine. And it seems like they both fueled this addiction in each other. So, And that's what I'm saying. You know, I hardly ever see a black man, a Caucasian woman together, and there's no drugs involved or a person who's a chronic alcoholic. It's always like you think about the Kardashians. You think those people don't sit up there and smoke dope together? You, of course, it's always some kind of drug involved. It's never, uh, 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 that's why I say it's not based on love. It's not love. It's either based on drug usage or brainwashing. Because love, God is love. God is love. Love don't see no color. Love don't see no, 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 whatever the hell. But this is all this stuff that you're seeing here today. It's not love. And that's what pissed me off the most. People want to sum me up as being a racist and all. No, I'm not. And I don't care if I lose subscribers because I don't do this to gain subscribers. I do this to try to help out my tubies and to try to uh, take away your pain and help you to understand, understand things. And if you want to unsubscribe, I'm happy about that because you are the weakest link. I don't need no weak links on my channel. I don't. I'm not here to appease you. I'm here to love you and to help you, you know, try to heal yourself, try to get a better understanding of things. And that's what I'm all about. Well, naturally, it is a question of whether she could somehow be involved. Maybe her addiction and some unknown problems she had with Roderick culminated into this crime. There's also the possibility that Kimberly was a victim, too. She could have been abducted by whoever killed Roderick. Whether she's a victim or whether she's a perpetrator, police need to speak to Kimberly McCray ASAP. Dallas police immediately issue a search for Kimberly McCray. Shortly thereafter, they make contact with her at her mother's apartment. They got on Kim. Kim went down to the police department to give a statement. A detective had contacted me and said they need to speak with me. And I told him, as soon as I get my mom situated, I'll be there. So I went downtown and I interviewed with the detective there. My emotions were so all over the place. I was crying. Fighting back a flood of tears, Kim informs investigators that she just learned of Roderick's death a couple of hours earlier. And my daughter-in-law, you know, she called me and she was like, Mama, what's what's going on with your boyfriend? And, and I'm like, well, what do you mean? She said, Mom, there's rest in peace all over his Facebook page. And I'm like, what? I called the morgue and I told him, I need to know if you guys have my boyfriend. I can't get a hold of him. She said, okay, well, all I can tell you is that, yeah, we have him. He's here. And his time at death was 10 minutes till 8 last night. Although Kimberly seems devastated by Roderick's death, investigators must press forward with their interview. Have you and Roderick ever used recreational drugs together? Uh, recreationally. We had jobs, you know, we had, we had to live. Even though he had a substance abuse problem, he worked Monday through Friday and he would use drugs on the weekend. Kimberly did suggest that she was able to control her drug use better than Roderick was particularly when he was overcome with sadness over the death of his daughter, Portia. He would try to pull back out, you know, say, I'm not going down that road again, you know, I'll do it. And, but then he fought his depression with his daughter so hard. He really took it hard. Have you two ever argued over drugs or did you owe anybody any money? 
No. And where were you last night? I stayed every single night, except the very night he was murdered. I did not stay that night. The text was. I want you guys to observe the strategy of this. How uh, we use the crying, you know, the crocodile tears, uh, the way they look at the man and they t tilt their head a little bit to try to look sympathetic. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the thing is, this female, she, I, I hope that I'm, I, I have it, you know, I hope you see why she left the first Rod Roderick. First, this is Rodney, and then she was with the previous guy, Roderick. She said she left the first one because his whole existence was about crack. So she's always been hanging out with black men who are on drugs. Okay? So she said the first one, she got sick of him because if he wasn't smoking crack, all he would be doing was either eating or sleeping. Eating, sleeping, smoking crack. She said he didn't have a job. He never had a job. Why the hell would any woman want to be with a man, first of all, who don't want to work, don't even have a history of what was... So that tells you right there off the bat, something's wrong with her. She's a fucking nut job. Okay, so then she says, he was living in my house. He was eating up my food. He was driving my car. He didn't work. She said, I used to give him money because he used to get on my nerve and I give him the money just so he could go. You see what I'm saying? And then I listen on YouTube to other females who are with these black men, Caucasian women. And these Caucasian, forget the, the video. I'm talking, I live in New York. I see it every day. These black men driving these women's car. These black men, she's buying him sneakers. We're talking about over a hundred dollars of sneakers and she's clothing him. He's eating up her food. Guess what? This is what freaked me out that I was shocked. These black men have the Caucasian women paying their child support. Because, you know, if you don't pay the child support, you could get locked up. Or when it's time for tax ta tax time, you know, they're going to come after they behind. And then you have these, these men, not only black men, but I do percentages. Like, like 85, 90% of these black men, man, come on. They got these women paying for all of this and paying for all of that. And my question is, what's wrong with these women? What's wrong with these females? You see, an ebony woman, a black woman, she'll help you out. She'll get dog too in the beginning. But we have a limit to our stuff. We have a limit. I'm thinking this may not be a coincidence. Why this time? Of all nights. Kimberly's alibi for that evening was that she was uh, spending time with her mother. My mom was in the hospital. She had been in the hospital for that whole previous year. Her yeah, mother was ill, so she been spending a lot of time taking care of my mom. The detectives were able to obtain Kimberly's phone records, and they were able to determine that she was nowhere near the offense location when it happened. Her alibi tape found that she was with her mom. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. With Kimberly seemingly eliminated as a suspect, investigators turn their attention back to the crime scene and the other residents of the Haskell Avenue apartment complex. Police interview Roderick's neighbors, but most of those interviews lead nowhere. However, when police again speak to Roderick's neighbor, Samuel Collins, who made the initial 911 call, he provides police with new details about the night of the crime. Well, I was at home watching TV. I decided I was gonna get up and get some air. He described what he heard as two loud noises. So when that happened, I looked out the window, seen the guy running. Mr. Collins did describe the male as a person that was trying to get away. He'd never seen that guy before. He was suspicious. This guy is running. Then I seen the gun. Unfortunately, Samuel Collins never got a clear look at the man's face. I didn't like go to the one that so he can spot me looking out because I don't need him shooting up there, you know, hey, got family in my house too. They've been great. Though Collins is unable to provide police with a detailed description of the suspected shooter, another neighbor, Maria Lancaster, tells police she got a better look at the guy. I just left my apartment and someone ran down the stairs. She was exiting her apartment. She saw the man come down the stairs. He was a taller man. Kind of a larger statue. But as tantalizing as these two accounts are, 
There's not a clear cut identification to go on. And without a name or any other physical evidence, this case can't move forward. You know, there were distinguishing markings or tattoos or anything you could tell us. I'm sorry, I didn't get that close of a look. At that point, the detectives were at a dead end. They had a description of the suspect, but they had no idea who the suspect was. Thank you for your time. But it turns out Roderick's girlfriend, Kimberly, has been sitting on a piece of information. One that has the potential to blow the case wide open. When police heard this, they were just completely speechless. All the love, all the fear, all that. One black man killing another black man. Another black man lands up in jail and he gets what? Life in prison with no hopes of parole. Bam! You brought two of them down. Wow. 30th, 2014. Less than 24 hours after Roderick Smith's shooting death. Dallas detectives are still trying to put a name to the face of the armed suspect seen playing Roderick's apartment complex just moments after the incident. He was described as a tall, balding African-American man. The witnesses said they saw him running from the scene with a gun. Was this guy a drug dealer? Was he trying to steal Roderick's stash and a fight erupted? Was there some other reason? While investigators aren't yet sure, Roderick's autopsy report may provide a clue. Looking at the wounds, it's like someone actually stood over Roderick and shot him once he was down. When you have close contact like that, it's one thing for a victim to go down and not be able to defend themselves, but to walk over and do a close shot to finish him off, it seems very personal. It makes you wonder if there's more going on here than meets the eye. But who would want to inflict such personal vengeance on Roderick? To answer that question, investigators bring his girlfriend, Kimberly McCray, in for another round of questioning. This time, Kimberly makes a startling confession. Kimberly said that shortly before taking up with Roderick Smith, she had broken up with her old boyfriend, Rodney Smith, who was no relation to Roger. Rodney Smith was Kim's off-again, on-again boyfriend for about nine years. She did think that, you know, she would eventually marry him. But Kimberly says in the months leading up to their final breakup, she began to question whether Rodney was truly husband material. He didn't work. He had no job. He never had a job. I was always the one working. Everything I had, he took. If I had a cell phone, he needed it. If I had a car, he needed it. He started wanting to go into my money. And I'm like, okay, look, you know, we got to pay rent, got my car, you know, got all those pay bills I've got to pay. He hounded me and harassed me until I finally just throw money at him and say, go, go do whatever the hell it is you want to go do, leave me alone. Is it possible that once Kimberly started dating Roderick, Rodney became jealous and can. You see my two bees? I wasn't lying to you. I wasn't saying things just being a racist or, or not whatever. This is what I see in New York where I am all the time. You heard it yourself from this Caucasian woman. If I need, if I had this, he wanted it. If I did this, he did. He's taking everything from this woman. That's what they're with these Caucasian women for. Now, if this was based on love, like I said, that would be a beautiful thing. But none of this is based on love. It's about brainwashing from the media. And it's either about uh, 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 drugs. These women are drug addicts. Something's wrong with these women. Something's got to be wrong with a, a, a race of women who would give up their own race of men. They say this is a white man's world. Why would you leave men of power to be with a bunch of guys who are powerless? Guys who don't want to work. Guys who even if they get a job, it's not even a decent paying job. How, why would you leave a race of men who take care of their children instead of abandoning them? abandoning them now we know that there are some caucasian men who do rotten things but what percentage of them do that what what 10 percent? 90 percent of them are amazing even if they don't get along with the woman anymore the woman and him are divorced but they still take care of their children you don't see that with the black community or these black men i've never seen so many caucasian women with holding a baby a baby in the carriage and one on her hip 
with these black men. And now you have other races of women who are waking up. They're starting to understand where black women are coming from. And, and I know it looks like black women that, you know, that, that, that we are the, the, the problem. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. They're starting to see where the problem really stems from. All in due time, baby. All in due time. Fronted his new rival, a confrontation that escalated into murder. For investigators, the jealousy motive would seem to gel with the deeply personal nature of the crime. But Kimberly explains there's just one problem with that theory. They were all three friends. Do you think there's any chance that Rodney has anything to do with this death? No, no way. No, Rodney and Roderick were, were good friends. All three of us used to hang out. We had a good time together. No, and everything was good. Roger needed a ride home from work one day, so Rodney and I took him. And then from that point, we all just kind of started hanging out. Three of them was like in this little group together. Rodney and uh, Kim would go to Roger's apartment and do drugs. And then other times they would just hang out. But Kimberly says that while the... Did you hear what she said? You know, I was with him. Yeah, and everything was good. Every How is everything good? You sitting up there, crackhead. How is everything good? When you smoking up damn near all half of anything you earn, you smoking it all up. And as you you watch further with this show, I'm gonna show you the setup. This this woman, she was shrewd. She was very shrewd. She knew her game when it comes to playing chess. Chess is all about the moves you make in life. You know that this is what my brother was telling me about. You got to know how to strategize. Chess is all about strategy. This woman's strategy was amazing. It really was because she left that first guy because he was smoking up everything, everything, everything. Then she went with the other black guy. Everything was cool in the beginning, but you want to bet, you want to bet, and she's going to act like she's so hurt and she's so, no, she's not. But let me tell you, you want to bet, he's, the second guy started doing the same thing. He started smoking up everything, and then when the money ran out, he put her out there on the street to make some money. Go get some money, baby. You could do this like with the quickness. Come back and like you what? Give me get two hours, three hours. You could come back with some money. We and then we could smoke some more. So she started to notice that the second black guy was starting to become like the first black guy. And she needed to get out. She needed to get out. So she strategized enough where she gonna take them both down. Watch how she did this. The three friends were extremely tight. There were problems in her and Rodney's relationship that extended far beyond his financial dependence on her. Mm -hmm. It was an abusive relationship, a turbulent relationship. Rodney, he could be Jekyll and Hyde. One minute he could have the biggest heart, but then there was the threats, and there, you know, it just kind of went back and forth. Eventually, Kim grew tired of Rodney's emotional roller coaster and his appetite for cocaine which far exceeded hers or Roderick's. He was a cocaine addict, smoked crack, and I did chew him like a lot, but that's all he lived for. So if he wasn't getting high, he was eating or sleeping. It was for nothing was wrong. Rodney and Kim got into an argument. Now, did I lie to you? Did I lie to you, Tubies? This is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm in New York, baby. I see this all the time. But I also see a lot of these black men they're in homeless shelters. They're at the YMCA. They're living on the street. They're sleeping in their car uh, for a while until the, as long as they could keep the damn car. You see them in the summertime sleeping in the park because a lot of people are throwing these black men out. They're getting sick and tired of them. So please, when you're ready to sit up here and judge ebony women talking about we're not this and we're too hard on our men and we no, 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 no. I had to let you hear it for yourself. About Rodney's drug use and spending money. You keep taking my damn money. Because you, because you don't know what to do with it. Wait, why Kim put up money for bills. Rodney wanted to continue to party with the money, and she wouldn't allow him. I had told him, I'm done with you taking things from me. I'm done. And what happened the night that we officially broke up was um, we had gotten in a really big fight, and he had a real bad habit of threatening. Yeah, no, no, you want to sit down? No. He pushed her. No, you want to walk away like a little 
She called 911. The police responded. They didn't arrest him because he didn't actually hit me. But they kicked off. Now, you notice how they say she called the police, but the police didn't arrest him because he hadn't officially hit her. The police didn't freaking... You notice that both of the cops were Caucasian men. The Caucasian man wasn't going to lock him up. Hell no. They saw this Caucasian woman. You sit up there and you, you, you went over there to the black side. Well, baby, this is what comes with it. They left. They sat up there and said, yo, dude, bye. Peace out, dude. In other words, keep whipping her behind, child. We don't care. Now, the Caucasian women don't even have no more protection from their white men. Because the white men are kind of getting sick of this nonsense. You're disrespecting them. Peace out, dude. No, nah, we can't arrest you. Continue with your, your, your whatever. Kim says that after that incident, she was done with... Oh, I wanted to make a point also. Sorry. This is the same situation that happened with my ex-narc. He was dealing with this Caucasian woman. She was a junkie, you know, a, a drug addict, homeless, or whatever. She lived in some house with some old man who was using her for sex and whatever. So he let her sleep in some little tiny room. Anyway, so my ex was smoking crack up in the room with this uh, female Caucasian woman. And he got pissed off. She wanted to leave because she had smoked up all his money. He didn't have no more money left, so she was ready to go. After she smoked up all his money, guess what she said to him? Nigga, please. She said, you ain't nothing but a, a crackhead black nigga. You ain't nothing but a crackhead black nigger. Oh, God. When she called him a nigga, everything jumped off. <laughs> Don't call that boy, that, 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 that jester, a professional fool. Don't call him a nigger. <laughs> he was on her. Like I told you, he was a, he was already abusive, which is why I kicked his fucking ass out of here. Excuse my colloquialism. Yeah, I had to get rid of him. <clears throat> but he ended up putting his hand on her. The police and everything was called. All of this. The police didn't arrest his behind because they see this Caucasian with this black dude. Yeah, okay. Proceed. Continue to proceed. Rodney for good and turn to Roderick for a shoulder to cry on. She called Roderick for comfort and Mark said, hey, come to my house where you can be safe and you just don't go back tonight. Just come stay here. And the next day at work, he called me all day to check on me and text me, are you okay? Are you okay? And I kept saying, yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. You know, thank you for letting me stay there. Yeah, I ended up coming back over to his house that night as well. Spent the night again. I believe that Kim was looking for an escape from Rodney Smith and she ran into the arms of Roderick Smith. It was in Roderick's arms that from Rodney to Roderick. Boy, don't she like those R's? But Kim finally found a devoted lover and true friend. You know, it was kind of like we were both on the same page at that point. But as Kim explains, her ex wasn't about to let her go without a fight. Rodney, the whole time, was sending her messages on Facebook trying to get her to call him because she changed her phone number. She was trying to get rid of him. I was happy with Roderick. I had no intention of going back to Rodney. Kim wanted to be with Roderick, not Rodney. But she knew that if Rodney found out about she and Roderick's relationship, he would be furious. So she and Roderick decided to keep their romance a secret. Kim felt like she had found a guy. Now you heard what they said. Please focus on this point. This is where the strategy is coming in with this broad. She said she knew that Rod, Rod, Roger, whoever the hell he is, I don't even take time to remember the names. Why should I clutter up my brain with that? No. Rod, whatever the hell, she knew that he would get upset if he knew that she was with this other guy, Rod Roderick. So she said they decided to keep it a secret. Now, keep in mind, she knows about Facebook. So she wasn't going to post. You, you're not supposed to post stuff like that on Facebook if you're supposedly keeping it a secret. And she kept it a secret for a while. She didn't post nothing. She didn't do nothing. But the moment she got sick of the second black jester, she got tired of him. Then she started posting pictures of her and the other guy, knowing that that guy was going to see it on Facebook. She knew what she was doing. They, you know, could show her more than just taking money from her. Someone to give her something. However, 
Kim tells police that on May 25th, she made a critical mistake. Roderick and I went to Louisiana, spent the day, gambled, Rodney had seen the pictures on Facebook. According to Kim, four days after returning from Louisiana. You see, they went someplace, they gambled, she put everything, they said she made a fatal mistake. She didn't make a mistake. That wasn't a mistake. That was deliberate. That was deliberate because she knew the other guy was going to see that. She knew it. Instead of blocking that guy from her Facebook page, because anyone who has Facebook, you and I both know you can block people where they can't see nothing of what's going on with your life. She didn't block that, that other guy. She wanted him to see this. Louisiana, Rodney confronted her. Their conversation did not go well. He goes, do you love him? And I said, well, I'll be honest, I care a lot about him. I really do. And he said, do you love him? And I said, yeah, I guess I do. While Kim has given authorities a tantalizing peek at a man with a possible motive, there's one important clue that has yet to be revealed, and it may be the missing piece to this whole sordid puzzle. Everybody knows this term. Friends, family, everybody. So anyway, that's pretty much it, my two beasts, because that's how it ends up. The guy ends up going over to the place. He ends up shooting the guy. Well, actually, he went over there, kicked in the door, and just was ready to shoot the guy. One black person killing another. You see, this, this female here, she's what you call a drama queen. She got to always have drama, drama, drama. That's why she likes being around a lot of black people uh, anyway with these drug addicts. That, and I'm not going to even say black, drug addicts. Drug addicts is always something popping off. And this is jumping off and this is popping off. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear about yo? Yeah, yeah. Th that's what they want. Constant drama, drama, drama. They don't want peace. That's the last thing they want. So like I said, in closing, she knew what she was doing. In point, two black men dead that one who got life in prison he's as good as dead so please keep your senses about yourself and as for these black men sitting up there wanting to turn against your own creation you need to take time to sit back chill and give things some thought think about this man straight up and down that's crazy this is sheila true love truly loving you you always have a choice Please choose wisely.